we have... Oh, I just realized I have these headphones on this whole time. Damn it. All right, well, let's redo that whole thing. <laughs> Hello, I'm Malco Jojo with the Horror Show blog. Not the Horror Show podcast, but the Horror Show blog. Today, we're doing another one-off uh, version. Not another group, but another one-off. And we're going to look at the Killer Reserved Nine Seats from 1974, Giuseppe Benatti directed film. So let's take a look at the trailer. This is a, an interesting one, and I think I'm going to have to go into spoiler territory, and I'll put up a spoiler thing. I have a, a new spoiler kind of music when the spoilers come up, so I'll have to figure that out. This is a giallo with a little more to it. Um, we have a group of people who have gone to a party, and we don't see that part, that's pre, and obviously it's the cars driving up, and they have all decided to go visit a theater owned by one of their party. And these groups of cars show up at this theater and they all go in. And the guy Patrick, the main protagonist here, he has the keys and he puts the keys down by the door and they all walk into the theater and like, oh, this is cool. And they're all wearing like these giant fur coats, which are fabulous. They're just like these, I, I never wear a fur coat. But just the look, again, like again, when talking about the giallo, a lot of it is style. There's the visuals behind it, but there's also the style. And these are very styly people that came from this party. They're all dressed up, and the women look great, and the guys look charming. But they're all wearing these huge fur coats, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's this, it's it's very cool seeing this kind of post-party look on all these people. And so the people file in, and we find out that Patrick is Mr. Moneybags here, and he has all this cash, all this inheritance. Um, he owns the theater. His sister's there, his daughter's there, his fiance's there, his ex-lover is there, and all their accoutrement. So the, the sister is a lesbian and her lover is there, and his ex-lover has her boyfriend there. His daughter has her boyfriend there, and she's really inappropriate with dad. She's a little... Wimp. Right, Pat? No man or spirit could possibly defy you. Liz! Hey, Liz! What you doing around there? We plebs belong in the gallery. Ugh, give me the creeps. That's probably the creepiest moment of the whole movie. Uh, where there's like this weird moment. They all have their baggage around this whole Patrick situation. Um, they like Patrick for the most part, but some people have ties that seem like they're a little meh with Patrick. The sister has, you know, Patrick has all the, the cash, she has no power basically. And at one point someone asks her about it and she goes, oh, what do you want to do? You know, I'm a woman. What, do you, what can you do? It's very interesting, very telling at the time. The ex-lover person is there and of course her current boyfriend does not really like Patrick all that much because of the history there and everything else. His fiance is there, and they're gonna get married. But, bum bum bum. Spoiler number one. She's humping around. Uh, she's humping around with this guy, and so they're plotting and conniving and sneaking away to you know do kissy kissy. And so you have all these t like tangled webs going on. 
and you find out a little bit about them through these great little character interactions in the theater, which is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that part. And then someone tries to bump off Patrick. Hmm. The old knife through the rope thing. And so that ups everything because they went from just post party hanging out of the theater. What are you going to do? You know, it's two in the morning. Why not? Especially when the party's getting boring. Go to a theater owned by someone that hasn't been opened in a hundred years or something. And yeah, that's when things ramp up and we start getting into jello goodness. Uh, the killer in this one is, again, old glove killer with a cape, because it is a theater, very fan of the opera-ish. But the mask that this person wears is a little creepy. It's just like, it's weird creepy, though. It's like like a like a mascot gone wrong, for like or a, one of these restaurant chain guys, like the King from Burger King or Ronald McDonald, how they have that creep factor. That's how this is. It's like, it's just like big, bushy eyebrows. And big bushy yellow hair with this creepy smile mask and it's like the eyebrows are so big that you can barely see the eyes very weird very weird mask it's it's disturbing that's the word disturbing and so yeah we get the killer going around trying to kill people and uh this is where we get in this another big spoiler element <laughs> there's a supernatural element here Again, we have different types of jolly, right? We have the just violent, like, I'm a killer, I'm killing because you, you know, killed my mom back in the day, you know. What are you doing? No, please, no! <laughs> then you have, like, the like the detective kind of thing where there's a group of detectives trying to figure this thing out and all that. Uh, you get the person, wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. Bird with crystal plumage, very much like that, where it's just like, or deep red. Dario likes that kind of thing. Where it's like, hey, I'm just a guy going from point A to point B, and oh, oh whoa, someone got murdered. And it's like, hey, did you do it? No, it wasn't me. I got to prove who, you know, who really did it. And those are funny and great because usually... <laughs> like in, in Bird with Crystal Plumage, uh, especially, the detectives are working on this case, and all of a sudden this guy shows up, and it's like, oh, what do you think? It's like, what do you think, author? What do you think, <laughs> like, guy that does not work for the police department? Why don't you get involved in this? You want to touch the body? Well, what are you going to do now? I don't know. It was simpler when I had only myself to think about very weird and so in this one we lean toward more of the supernatural and so i think suspiria definitely falls into this where it's it's it is very giallo it's if you look at it it's giallo basically but then people go but there's magic and stuff in it and scary stuff and it's like okay so it's a giallo with scary stuff in it i think they call it what they call it it's basically supernatural giallo this falls into that realm where the stuff that's happening is not just this killer guy, as you find out. Yeah, there's some magical, supernatural stuff going on. And that's one of the scenes I love. There's a part where the ex-lover's boyfriend is this doctor, and he's very like, I know everything. I'm, I'm sure this, there's a rational explanation for all this. And he says, like... There are tricks that can be explained very simply. For a start, the doors could easily have been blocked by radio control. Remote control locks? They had remote control locks in 1974? <laughs> like, it's like, wouldn't it make more sense? It's like, there's some guy going around killing people. He probably has an accomplice on the outside locking the doors so we can't get out. That would make sense. Remote control locks? This is bizarre. Uh, but this is another part that I love about this movie. So as that supernatural element comes in, we start getting more backstory for what could be possibly going on. And 
And as that unfolds, it takes it from just being, you know, it, it would work if it was the sister who's pissed off or, or the lover who's jilted or this, you know, jealous ex-boyfriend or something. That kind of element that comes into a lot of these Giallo uh, movies. That would make sense. It would make sense and it's fine. But to have it be like a more supernatural thing, it actually took it up a notch for me personally. I like that because I just was waiting. You know, in the beginning, you see all these people and they're just doing their bickering and, you know, snipping and bad staring thing. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, one of these people is going to kill somebody. You think, oh, someone's trying to kill Patrick. So it's one of these people, obviously, who was upset about money or ex-lovers or something like that and then it takes it another step so that's fun it was fun and then there's the like Edwidge Finich I have or Fennec I love it's just like <laughs> um, but there's a woman in here who's very similar Rosanna Schiaffino Schiaffino Rosanna Schiaffino beautiful it's gorgeous beautiful eyes and the dark hair it's like a cut in a bob really reminded me of Edwige. I think if you were to take that character and switch the two of them, it would just be be seamless. Uh, I think there's an age difference that didn't play well. There's a couple of things that, that are things to look for in here. There's a, there's a couple of fun elements. One is the disappearing man gag. And I'm still like, I, I watched it twice this last round. I'm like, wow, that was really well done. So take a look for that. I'm not going to tell you where it is. The outfits are fantastic. But if they all just sat down and waited after finding out that someone's trying to kill them all, they would have been fine. Someone would have seen all the cars and they would have watched each other's backs and totally fine. But this is a giallo. You have to have people like, let's split up and all look for a way out. And they all walk off and wander off. So check it out. It's really good. I really like it. And... Uh, let me know what you think. Check out the blog. And uh, thank you for watching.